All right, JoeyRitter.com on Twitter at Joey Ritter. I love my guest today. I am very excited <laughs> about my guest today. We got Zippy hailing from, are we in Hamden, Connecticut? Is that where we're at right now? Yes, sir. In Hamden, born and raised, my friend. Good old Hamden, Connecticut. You and I go back a long way. It's we good played, to see you, my friend. It's good to see you too, man. It's been It's <laughs> been about six years, I think, since we last saw each other. And I remember exactly when the last show was. It was because it was on September 11th, 2007. Oh, yeah. Right. The, the, the last show. So it's been, you know. Oh, dude, s- no. It, it was even longer than that, man. I it thought was it was 2007. It was 2004, dude. We're, we're, we're way older than you think we are, man. Are you serious? 2004, man. Oh, my God. Dude, it was it was September 11th, though. Wait, so it was, it was right after the tour? It was, yeah, it was 2004. Yeah. So things yeah. fell apart after the tour. The tour is what... Uh, they fell apart pretty quick, man. They all right, well, I should mention to the dozens <laughs> and dozens of people watching that we did a nice U.S. tour in 2004. Both of our bands, uh, your band Grover Dill, my band Ritter, just rocked it down the Dude, East Coast. And, and and right when you told me, look what I found. Look at that thing. Look, can, can you see it there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's perfectly. you, there's you, and there's me. See? But us being... Like, all Fight the hard hunger and tour. Tough and, you know, with... Yeah, I found perfect. it. I, I I like to collect the nostalgia. So I when when we we talked earlier, I was like, I found it in the drawer. So. I was so I forgot. I mean, I didn't forget yeah. about him, but like mine was, you know, like just demolished yeah. right after yeah, the yeah, tour. Yeah. Like so, I I didn't have a beard then. I was uh, I was a young pup. Yeah, yeah, you were you were clean cut, and uh, <laughs> you know, but it's you know it's good to see you. you got a new band now called Beach Avenue. Yes. So you know a little bit different than your your punk rock roots, but still yep. very good music, great vocals, great melodies. How did you get started with that band? Um. Well, actually, it's uh it goes back to my band. Well, after Grover Dill, there was a couple little projects, uh, and then I played in a band a couple years ago called Modern Hearts. Um, we played for a couple years, did the local scene. Uh, did some recording, did some showcasing, so it went really well. But then, um, like all bands do, eventually it fell apart. And uh, we had actually been living in a house, three of us in the band, on Beach Avenue in Place Milford, Connecticut, right on the shoreline, right on the water. Um, and our singer Nick now had been living with us as well, just doing like solo stuff. Um, so even when we were still in a band, me and my guitarist, other Nick, we were like, "Dude, you should play out more. Like, we'll be your backing band," you know. We kept talking about it. Nothing ever happened. Then when um, this last band kind of just, you know, dissolved, like, all right, this is done. Played our last show. Um, we had gotten, I got an email from someone at Mohegan Sun, you know, the casino up yep. here in Connecticut. They do a battle of the bands every year. Uh, it's like a regional thing. They do it up on the rooftop, like garage there. It's pretty cool. We had played there the year before with that band, Modern Hearts. Um, so the guy was like, hey, do you want to enter again? And so I'm like, oh, actually, that band just, broke up i have this new band i'm starting he's like all right we'll get the submission and it's doing in like three days i'm like cool and i think about it it's like we hadn't even jammed we hadn't even got together it was just like an idea so um so i was like all right we gotta make something up you know at least just see what happens so i took a couple of his solo demos um and i just made a little bio up of what we've done individually and i'm sitting there i'm like band name and you know how it is with band names i mean you could like you could drive you can go crazy like for like five months, you know, racking your brain. So I'm looking out the window and I'm like, Beach Avenue. And I'm like, sounds good. Yeah, you know, it does. sounds good. It it works. It's got a story behind it. Here's where we are. Here's well, where Zip, Zip, I gotta stop you though. <laughs> you do know that Ritter was was the street that uh, we practiced oh, okay. on and that was that was how All we right. got our band name. There you go, man. So it's you know, it's a popular technique, I guess. Absolutely. You know? But it, it just, you know, it fit, it worked and I was like well, let's just use it for now because I didn't even know what was going to happen. Like, you know, you could change it. Band names change. So submitted it, didn't think anything of it. And, you know, about a week later, um, I got an email back and they were like, yeah, you've been selected for the final eight. So I called my singer up. He was in Vegas on vacation with like his college buddies. And I'm like, yo, uh, we uh, we got picked for the finals for this thing. I was like, we actually have to like make a band now. <laughs> so that was that was the start of the band so it so basically did, started out of nothing so what is, did you play old songs from your old band or what no well for like this contest we basically had to do open with a cover three originals close with a cover it was like you know oh, heads up yeah. round you know what i mean band versus band you know winner moves on um so he had a couple songs um and we just basically fleshed them out and you know played them as a full band um and put it together and it was funny we just you know we got to the first gig practice you know maybe for about a month um and 
you know, just kind of gelled. It works. We got to the first gig. We played well. We won it. Went to the second gig. We played well. We won it. And then we were in the finals and just played again. And we ended up winning the whole thing. And now it's a thing. So, you're recording your second EP. Yeah, man. Your social yeah. media is beefing up. You guys just followed yeah. me on Instagram. I hit you back with a follow. <laughs> Things are looking up. Yeah, uh, man. It's a, it's all about the social media these days. It's not like when me and you were playing, man. It's a whole different world now. Well, so. I'll tell you, like hooking up yeah. with, with you guys was great because I remember... I think we were in Chicago, and I remember, and it was weird because you had like an internet connection. I know, I think it was through your phone or something. I had, yeah, I had my old school Verizon flip phone, and like the old school, and I had it connected USB to like the old like VCR looking laptop, and it like it used my minutes, so like I usually only go on nights and weekends. But we're talking two thousand four, man. That was unbelievable for that time (laughs) period. Everyone's like, "What are you doing? You're on the internet." But we're sitting at the merch tables together. And, uh, you know, I'm looking over at you. I'm like, hey, what's, you know, what are you doing over there? And you're like, oh, it's this new thing, MySpace, you know? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm like, but what is it? Like, why why would a band be on MySpace? You're like, oh, it's, you know, you put your music on there. People can check you out. I'm like, well, uh, what about a website? Why, why wouldn't people go, you know, it... it and then when we were done the tour, you know, we started the MySpace thing, and then you know the rest is history. Yeah, man, it's you know, it's it's come a long way, man. It's made things easier and harder at the same time, you know. But, oh yeah, I know that so for sure. Yeah, man. Do you think we're going to be sitting here like five years from now, and Facebook and Twitter are like things of the past? I don't know. I mean, things are always going to come and go, but I, I mean, it's definitely changed. We're definitely in a you know a social media world now. I mean, everyone's got their phone attached to them. You know, no matter where you are, you got your phone, you're checking emails and who who liked your picture you just posted and, you know, who yeah. did this. So well, it's, it's you like know. it's like an addiction, you know, like it is. I it went is. to the movies on Saturday night and it was like the longest I didn't touch my phone for two hours. Yeah, it's I'm, weird, man. I'm sitting there yeah. like it's 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 some kind of like this this, this like gambling addiction or something. Yeah. Where like I just want to pull my phone out and just see if like anybody's tweeted me or posted a comment. Yeah. I I kind of don't like that. It's yeah, it's tough. I, I was just talking about that with someone yesterday. We were like outside, you know, sitting by the water, like around you know this this awesome area in the shoreline in Connecticut, and like you know you should be just enjoying it, but like. You look around and, you know, 75% of the people are, like, checking this, taking a picture, posting it. You know, it's like, it, it is what it is, man. You know, like, it, we're, we're here and it's yeah. not going to, you know, And it's, it's easy to change. sit and, like, rip on these people and be like, oh, man, these people are walking around just checking their phones. Take, But I'm doing the same thing, so I can't uh, yeah. say anything. We're, 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 we're all guilty of it at this point, man. Yeah. So. But, you know, very few people are catching up via Skype and posting it on the internet. That's this revolutionary. This is actually my first Skype, I told you, man. So you're, you're, I get that you're, a lot. You're popping my Skype cherry. And it is. This is social media. You know, it's 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 more social than and Facebook or Twitter or anything. For sure, man. What's you your can't... what's your uh, social uh, media preference? What's what's your favorite? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think Facebook's very good for you know because you're you're in a band and like you know I, I DJ on the side so it's good to promote where you're at promote your gigs cuz people are on there of all ages now all demographics um Twitter's cool I mean I still use it um I'm not as up on it I like Instagram more because it's you're posting a picture you can make it look cool you can attach words to it and you know what I mean to yeah. me I don't know Twitter I usually just end up hating on things you know when I post on there and I'm like I don't want to be negative Nancy so right uh, I, I so loved I, Instagram I, I, yeah, Instagram's fun to me. You know, it's it's, it's visual because everything's visual now. Like we're doing more on YouTube, and you know, everybody wants to see things. It's not it's not just good enough to have audio anymore. They want to see, they want to see who's behind the audio now. It's not just good enough to listen. Right. That's you can't just do that anymore. You need videos, live sessions, covers. They they just uh, yeah. released uh, Vine for Android today. Oh, okay. You ever do Vine? I, I have an account. I I've never dabbled. Yeah, I've never I'm, dabbled in it yet. I have an idea for my first Vine, but I'm not going to reveal it yet because it's oh, gonna, okay. It's going to take like 20 minutes to post a six second video, but it's, <laughs> but you'll be excited because of the hat you're wearing. So that's my hint. All right, man. Now well, you're well, you're you're a very good drummer, Zippy. Have you um you've been playing for how long? Um, I mean, I don't know, 18 years now or so, mm-hmm. 18, 19 years. Now, did something you, like that. Did you just have great parents that let you have a drum set in the house and, you know, uh, the yeah, rack? they they actually did and it's funny, it goes back to actually even earlier than that before I started on a set. It was a uh, 4th grade. I always go back to it. it's funny cuz in band class, you know, it's like, all right, time to pick an instrument. 
So all my friends, like three or three of them, they want to play saxophone. So I'm like, cool, let me play sax. So I was a little guy back then. You know, I was a little short, little uh-huh. short red hair guy back then. And the teacher was like, nah, nah, your hands aren't big enough to play sax. Right? <laughs> and I'm like nine year old kid, and I'm just devastated, you know. And she's like, here, she just hands me a pair of drumsticks. She's like, here, be a drummer. And I was so so mad and angry, you know. I was like, I want to play what my friends are playing. But I look back and I'm like, thank you. I want to go back and like give that lady a hug. And, That's awesome. Like, you know, because if she never did that, who knows? You know, maybe I wouldn't have kept playing and. I, I, I played saxophone so. when I was in fourth grade, and I just remember that case being uh, heavy. Yeah. Like, I had to carry it and then put it down and rest my arm and then pick it up again. So I probably I probably made out pretty well then. But, uh, yeah, then it was – I played in school a little bit, you know, snare drum. And then um, probably I think I was 12 years old, got my first kit. And I was, you know, pretty terrible, pretty bad for <laughs> right. a number of years. And my, I played with Eric, Eric from Grover Dill. Uh-huh. Uh, me and him played just in my basement in his Mr. garage. Mr. Los and, Angeles, as we say. Yeah, yeah. And we, we just played for forever, man. Playing like Nirvana songs, Green Day songs, Offspring. Now, were you guys neighbors? Uh, Yeah, we, we grew up together. Like, we met, I think, we played baseball together fourth grade, and then we went to school together fifth and sixth. So we knew each other from from uh, from a young age. And so middle school was like our first, like, full-out band together. And ever since then, just played. And, yeah, my, my parents were very very uh you know supportive and put up with us sounding terrible for years and yeah you know, I, I appreciate it a lot and you know as as the years went on with different bands we got better until it was they almost they finally listened to the songs they're like i can actually listen to this right right that, and that's when you're like oh cool like but at that point you're like i don't know if this is good like if my parents are saying it's cool like, <laughs> you know, maybe it's not a good thing yeah but, it's, uh, it's good to have some positive reinforcement but yeah but you know and and you grow too as a drummer you get older and you know you, you learn a little more like you know you don't got to play like travis barker all the time you know simpler is better sometimes you learn to play to a click you know and it definitely helps you improve, and yeah. you understand that you're the backbone of the band. You're just a part of it, you know. Right. When 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 you were doing snare drum in 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 the marching band, were, were you doing traditional grip? Just regular, yeah. Nothing crazy, man. I've always just been a traditional guy, I guess you could no, say. No, I mean like the traditional grip, where like in oh, one no. hand you're like holding no, like I was, a pencil. I was never, I was never doing any of that crazy stuff. No. I don't know why, but I've been like obsessed with researching drummers that play traditional grip. Like yeah, no, it's, it, 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 it it looks cool as hell when I see guys playing. I just never, you know, just never got into it. Yeah. But That's exactly cool. the reason, though. It looks cool. That's the only yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, man, if, if it works, go with it, you know? Yeah. yeah so, man. so you're wearing a Hartford Whalers hat, former yes. uh, NHL team. I think, what was it, 1994 they moved to Carolina? It was early 90s, yeah, man. I was, I was a diehard. Me and my dad used to, you know, go to some games, watch them all the time, and you know, I had I had the little green satin, you know, whaler's jacket growing up, all the hockey sticks. I used to go to the meet and greets, you know, get the autographs, pictures, right. and pretty much broke my heart when they left. So, I mean, I haven't been the same since when it comes to hockey. I mean, I'm a sports fan in general, but... So, who pick, do you root for now? I mean, you're right in the middle of, like, you know, New I, York and Boston. And- I never picked up a new team, man. I, like, I just, you know, I appreciate sports. I like watching good, you know, good games, good battles, um... But yeah, it just kind of kind of scarred me a bit, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure. I can't. It was, it was a bum, right? Still holding out hope that maybe someday they'll come back. We 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 have no professional sports teams in Connecticut, so it's it's a definite bummer. That is but, weird, man. Yeah. I mean, I, Connecticut doesn't get much respect because you're you know right near Boston and New York City. Like it's yeah. It's, it's I mean, that's how state. that's how it's always been for music too, man. We're we're just the in between, you know, like. It's like it's like you're always just going from from negative ground here when you're starting. You but know? I remember I remember when you first emailed me. You know, I think you were trying to book some shows in Pennsylvania, and mm-hmm. I remember I'm like, wow, this band's from Connecticut. <laughs> like that just like blew my mind. Like yeah, man. I never knew any bands from Connecticut or could think of any. Like, fa- was there any famous bands that came out of Connecticut? I mean, earlier on, you know, in the '60s, '70s, I think there were some, and there was like Michael Bolton. You know, he did he did well, and then. You know, like like obviously Hatebreed is probably one of the bigger, um, you know, newer bands. <laughs> that's, that's that's done quite very a, well. a variety um, there from Michael Bolton to Hatebreed there. Yeah, I mean honestly, you know, but I mean there are a lot of good musicians and stuff that are around here. But as far as big name bands, probably have to go back, like I said, the '60s, '70s. Um, but as of late, I mean, like I said, it's it's tough. It ain't easy being from Connecticut, but I I, I enjoy living here, growing up here. So I would right. I wouldn't change it. And I enjoyed, uh, you know, all the shows that we played with you up there. Now, you and I did 
uh, most of the, all, all of the booking for our respective bands, the, the yes. real hard grunt work. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, as I mentioned before, we booked that tour. Now, is there any memories of that tour that stand out for you? I mean, I don't, it was a little hazy. I mean, right. We were, uh, <laughs> we, were, we were, we were, we partied a little bit. I, I remembered, I think about 95% of every beer that was drank on that tour was funneled. <laughs> I remember right? that. Yeah. We had the big funnel we brought with us, and I think pretty much every beer that was consumed went through the funnel. That, that, uh, and there's there's some video out there, you know, of some some hotel parties and and other shenanigans. And then we, I think we had a show in Tennessee that just the promoter never showed up to, right. so we just funneled beer in the, in the parking lot. Right. We just played like, the oh, let's just funnel, let's just funnel this thirty pack. You know, the promoter <laughs> didn't show up. Cool. Let's, you know, let's just do that. So there's there's video footage. We we had a show in State College, and uh, I remember, you know, I'm all tough guy playing, you know, on stage and stuff, and uh, we go do a funnel on stage. It's gonna be great, and you know, and you you bring out the funnel, and you know, I just assume one person's gonna pour a beer, and all of a sudden you see like five hands pour. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Beers, and I'm like, oh, well, I can't choke. That was it. That anything. was that basement at Penn State. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember that. That was a good time. And the cops showed up, and everyone was like running oh, out of the yeah. woods and running. <laughs> there was some dude like American History X in the front yard getting arrested, yeah. and yeah, we have good footage times, of that man. too. Good times, yeah. I, you know, it's it's funny. Like my my wife, who I met in 2005, after that time period, I try to explain to her. The, the essence of Pete Dill. I, tr- I, I tell the stories, but they don't, you know, do any justice. I mean, that was that guy was like rock st- as rock star as you can get without, yeah. you know, being a rock star. Yeah, man. We we just had a good time. We were all about, you know, just having fun, putting on a good live show, um, you know, giving people what they wanted and just, you know, not really caring, doing it our own way, you know. And, yeah. What's that know? boy up to? Uh, he, he's doing well, man. Yeah, he's 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 a little entrepreneur. He's he's always working hard. He was doing uh, screen printing for a while, right? Yeah, yeah, I was doing that with him. Um, he is um, he's now a partner in um, these uh, stores opening up on. Uh, there's several of them already on the uh, highway 95 in Connecticut. They're cool. opening up more of them. They sell all uh, cool stuff from Connecticut, um, t-shirts and all sorts of uh, goods. He's doing it with his brother Robbie. Right. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, now, it's going well. Throughout your history of playing in bands. Uh, you know, you don't have to mention names, but has there ever been a time where a female has come between uh, plans for the band? Um. Oh yeah, of course. Can you uh, recall a specific <laughs> thing without mentioning names? What this female did to uh, disrupt um, the piece? I mean, they've always, you know, they've always altered, uh, you know, frames of mind and, uh, <laughs> you know, certain plans and now you can't do this and you shouldn't be doing that. I don't know, man. It, it's happened a number of times. But, but as the guy who books the shows, that's, the, you know, it all comes back on you. Yeah. You have the relationship with the promoter and all that. Yeah. I am I mean, you know, I don't know. It's it, It's been more, you know, as far as shows, nothing can really stand out as being room because of that just in general you know the the flow of the band and things you know progression being stopped in its tracks yeah and, yeah you know total different direction being taken and mindsets you know i can't think of a particular show usually usually shows didn't get botched you know people were pretty good about that right um right. but yeah man it, it always happens there's a, there's always the yoko effect you those know those females you know yeah i mean there's always going to be you know there's going to be there's going to be girls there's going to be egos, uh, you know, there's going to be booze and whatever else is going to get in the way. You know? <laughs> those, 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 are the, those are the guarantees in rock and roll. Always going to happen. It, it just matters when and how bad. That's right. all. Now, yeah. Zippy, we got some uh, random Twitter questions. Can you field some random Twitter questions? I'm, I'm down for anything, Jeff. All right. Let's do it. I've got four here. The first one comes from Michael Kalenich, who is at M. Kalenich. And he he just wants to know: Have you ever had Indian food? Um, I don't know. I mean, I grew up a pretty picky eater. I've expanded a little lately. I, I mean, I like rice, but I don't. I mean, Indian. Well, it, would that be considered like falafel and stuff? Is that, well, like, is that, ha, have you gone to an Indian restaurant and uh, had the buffet? Uh no, I can't say that I have, Joe. Mm-hmm. I can't say that I have. There's there's this place, Mamoons in New Haven. They're like it's like falafel. You know, it's where everyone goes and. We went one time and I ordered like chicken kebab, something, pita, I don't know. And everyone like looked at me like, oh, you're ordering from the meat side of the menu? 
It's like, what? what? I can't order? Like, you brought me to this place. I don't want falafel. You know right. I, mean? so I get like, oh, well, okay. Well, why is it there? I shouldn't order. You know what I mean? Okay, but, so that's that's likely a no. That's okay. probably a no. No, right. I never really delved in the, into the curry, uh, the curry experience. Got it. Now, Amanda R., who is at Star Dotted Eyes, would like to know, what's your all-time favorite TV commercial? Oh, my God. TV commercial. Damn, that's tough. That's a tough. That is a tough one. I'm glad I'm not on the receiving that's end of it. That's tough, that. man, because, I, see, I was born in 82, so, I mean, I, I've experienced a lot of commercials over the years. Man, I don't know. I don't if for some reason, on the spot, I, I don't know, th- those old Mentos commercials just used to crack me oh, up. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Just just so corny. And then we were watching the Foo Fighters documentary the other day. And, you know, Dave Grohl was talking about how when he was doing videos, he was like, you know, we're not a serious band. So they, they would like mimic all those cheesy commercials. So I don't know. That comes to mind. Yeah, I used to the, love those. It was Big crack, Me you know? was the song, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I'd have to say, I mean, if you gave me a few more minutes, I'm sure I'd come up with something more creative. But that was a good at, answer. At the yeah. moment, the the Mentos ones, you know, cracked me up. Did you did you uh, watch that Foo Fighters uh, documentary on Netflix? Like, where can I find that? I don't. I, it was like on like uh, not Palladia or one of the. It was on one of those channels. I don't know. I was watching it with my singer the other night. We were just hanging out and came on. It was just basically charting their whole for them starting out to finishing with recording. You know, in his house and everything. Yeah, that's got to be phenomenal. For, yeah, it was pretty badass, man. It makes you, you know, I always liked him, and I was always a fan. It just makes you respect him even more. So it was, Absolutely. You can't not like the Foo Fighters. Now, yeah. uh, Jarvis Lands, who is at JLands001, would like to know what your favorite cookie is. Favorite cookie? You know, see, that's not, it's another tough one. Cause I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I like a few. Like, as you know, we, we used to be sandwich artists at... Uh, that's as, true. As yes. So we used to make the cookies in there, you know. So I'm I'm partial to a nice a nice fresh sugar cookie. Uh-huh. Um, but I mean, I would say nothing beats a a nice chocolate chip chocolate cookie. Chip, yeah. Chocolate chip. When I it's mean, Christmas I'd have time, to say, you, you know, I have an Italian family, and yeah. there's always this giant plate of cookies that's like, you know, these real intricate cookies that probably took forever to make, and I'm always yeah. just reaching for the chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, you know, it, it's just a, it's a tried and true. It's a tried and true. You know, I, obviously there could be bad chocolate chip cookies but to make a good one <laughs> i'd have to say chocolate chip man you know? all right <laughs> the last one uh all right this 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 is this is a doozy okay. uh patty bow who is at patapillar would like to know would you rather eat a live tarantula or have fran drescher play by play your life for a week and then i actually responded to him i'm like what do you mean by play by play your life and he said she just walks around and describes what you're doing and follows you around all day I think I go with Fran Drescher. Uh, I now <laughs> I agree with you. I don't think there's any situation where I'd eat a live tarantula. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like I. I mean, I, I don't mind spiders nearly as much as I mind snakes. I mean, that's literally my one thing. I'd rather have like a hundred spiders crawling over me than one snake. Ooh, you know it. I, I think it's just because like I, something's got to have legs. As long as it has legs, I can see where you're at, what you're doing. I don't know, but. I mean, I, you know, it's just a week. I mean, Fran Drescher, she's pretty hot. Yeah. You know? I was going to say, is it is yeah. it mid-90s Fran Dresser or 2013 Fran Dresser? Because it's mid-90s Fran Dresser. I mean, boy, yeah. I don't care how annoying her voice is. It wasn't, it wasn't specified, but you know what? I mean, you know, why not? Let's let's give it a go. But even 2013 Fran Dresser, you know, I'm sure let's she's give got it a some go. stories. And, you know, she's yeah. been in the business for a while. I mean, occasionally, I have an interesting week these days. I mean, not quite as interesting as, as back when you knew me, but, you know. <laughs> Play by play would probably be interesting. So right, I I I'd go with that answer right. B. Answer yeah. B. Now Zippy, <laughs> we are going to bring back a segment that we have not done for about ten episodes. I've 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 kind of retired it because it was always hard to think of songs. But we're going to bring it back for you. It's right, a man. it's a segment called Turn It Up or Turn It Off. Very very okay. simple. I name five songs, and you tell me if you turn it up or turn it off. All right, sounds good. Let's All go. right, first song, Little Miss Can't Be Wrong by the Spin Doctors. Man, I, I don't know. I, I, I'd say turn it down, man. I'm sorry, Zippy. Turn it down is not an option. It is turn it up or turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. May, may I know why? I need it because you thought about that for a while. I need to know what went through your head as you made that decision. I think I've just heard it too many times, and it's just it's just not up there with like my, some of my favorite 90s classics. Got know? it. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, respectable. Uh, Tom Petty, Running Down a Dream. 
I, I listen to any Tom Petty, so I'm I'm a Tom Petty fan. So so turn it so up. We turn it up. All right. Turn it up. Time bomb by Rancid. Turn it up. Turn it up. No For question. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Toad the wet sprocket. Walk on the ocean. I'm not familiar with that song. I love when that happens because that means I get to sing it, and it goes <laughs> like this: Walk on the ocean, step on the shore. Oh, okay. Fresh I... becomes water. Right. Uh, uh, you could turn that one up. That's all right. All right, a little slower, yeah. but you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got you. I got you. Last one: Presidents of the United States of America, lump. Oh, turn it up, man. For sure. Turn it up, yeah. In fact, Presence. I think when we're done with this interview, I want to listen to that song. Sounds good, man. No, I, I, I respect those guys. They, they, they came at things in a different way, you know, and it was they good. They did. Pe- like the bass player had two strings, and the guitar yeah, it, player. It, it, it was just strings. different, you know. And, and and Peaches, Peaches was a good song. I respect it. Yeah, that definitely I, broke up what was happening at the time. You know, like Green yeah. Day and grunge and the whole thing, and they were, yeah, they were just out For of sure, left man. field. I respect, I respect the presidents. Right on. Uh, hey, Zippy, I could not be happier to catch up with you. It's been such a while. Um, people need to check out Beach Avenue. Facebook.com slash Beach Avenue. Beach Avenue Music.com. You got an EP. Any uh, timetable when, when we can expect the EP? Um, Probably July. I don't know what early, mid, late yet, but Perfect. it's looking like July. We got a couple shows in July. We're aiming to get it out for. Uh, we're opening up for Starship uh, of Jefferson Starship. Uh, in mid July. Whoa! So. Wait, what? We're we're opening up for for Starship. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah like is so, it like original like, member? Still yeah, Starship. M- Mickey Thomas. Nothing's gonna stop us now. You know. Uh, that was my wedding song. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're opening up on uh, in Hamden actually on the uh, town green. They do four uh, four outdoor concerts a year every summer, and That's uh, we're yeah we're direct support for Starship. So I mean. Should be interesting, you I know. Think, like, I think hey, that's that's gonna be a nice be, be a nice big crowd, you know. So right on. Definitely down to rock out, man. Well, hey, you know, Beach Avenue, it's the summer, it's July, you know, that's it's a very uh, summery name. And you're also DJ Zippy on Twitter. Man, good to see ya. Come back you too, again, eh? You too, Joe. It's been nice to catch up, man. We should we should just Skype sometime. Just I think just so. to talk. I think just so. To talk. All right, man. All right, Zip. Be good. Signing off. Later.